So knowing psychology and knowing the minds is so important. So in order to achieve Buddhahood, in order to fulfill your happiness, still you need to realize the mind. Without knowing the mind, you really don't know how to accomplish, how to achieve you know, happiness, how to achieve Buddhahood or Nirvana. Also, the cause of happiness mainly depends on mind. So it is so important to know the definition of mind, what kinds of mind we have. Okay, first everybody, uh, please tell me the sevenfold division of mind. Number one, Pali perceiver. Number two, Konezar. Number three, Number four, Number five, Number six, Number seven, Deceptive or consciousness or you know wrong consciousness. So generally, there are so, so many different ways you can make a division. Right now, we are trying to explain based on the seven divisions. So can you tell me what is the definition of mind? Definition of mind. Nature of mind. Clear and knowing. Look at... Uh, so Within us, we have a body, we have a speech, then we have a mind. Make sure, you know, you must differentiate between your body and your mind, your speech and mind. So when you say clear, is negate. The body is not mind. You, yourself, is not mind. When you say clear, the nature is clear. Our body nature is not clear. We, the human being, also in all sentient being, has a mind, but we are not mind. We have minds. The second, knowing, you know, not only clear, it's a knowing, is the function of the mind. The mind, mind, the mind always function to realize, to perceive, to see something. That means knowing. Knowing can be correctly knowing or wrongly knowing. Then uh, I explain, you know, each of the seven minds. Now we go, I ask you to, you know, do the homework for three conditions. What are the three conditions? Three conditions, sense direct perceivers, okay, observe object condition, condition, immediately preceding condition, okay. Now because within the direct perception, uh, perceivers, okay, perceive is the mind that we call perceiver, be the mind perceived something, right? So the direct, the valid perceiver has uh, four divisions. So before we go, next one, what is the definition of the direct valid perceiver? The definition. Yeah. Okay. Non mistaken knower that it is free from conceptuality. Right. That means, look at, when you, when you use your eyes consciousness, the eyes consciousness is so knower, knower is knowing something, right? But shop, shopkeeper, sell, seller, no knower. That means the eye consciousness can see the object. That means the eyes, the eyes consciousness is Consciousness is knower. Not only knower, it is free from conceptuality. 
right? That means when the mind can, when the mind perceive the object, it object perceive directly. The between object and the subject, there's no imaginary. They say you know, free from conceptuality. That means, for example, right now, if you try to remember something, that moment you have a mind. The mind is conceptual, conceptual mind, not direct. In this moment, if you just look at the Buddha statue, you can see the Buddha statue directly. That kind of mind is not, you know, conceptual mind. It is a direct mind. So direct valid perceiver has how many divisions? Four. Four. What are they? Okay, four. So when you read a book about, you know, say Buddhist psychology or general psychology, that means you, you must know this, this book talking about what? This chapter is talking about what types of mind? That means sense direct perceivers. That means we have uh, five senses. The mental direct perceivers it's a bit difficult to understand. In Tibetan, we call you know Yi Mun. Third, self cognized direct perceiver. The four is yogi direct perceivers. But now we everybody know we have you know five senses direct perceivers. This means you know eye sense, air sense, nose, tongue, and body. The mental direct perceivers. For example, when you look at an object, when you listen a sound, you know, the sound is listening by the air consciousness. When you listen the sound, or you, you suddenly you feel, oh, this is, you know, this kind of sound, before you say, you know, this is that. Between the eyes consciousness and, you know, after that, there's another mind. For example, when I show this, everybody can see this, that, you know, painting or picture or painting of Buddha. When you see, suddenly you say, this is painting of Buddha. Before, you, you know, between there is another mind, but it's, they act very fastly, very quickly, so we cannot, you know, uh, difficult to recognize. This means, I consciousness, when see the object, second say, this is that object. Between there is another mind, we call man, the mental direct perceiver. The subcognized direct perceiver. So I explain what does mean subcognized. Yogi. Yogi means when you, you know, practice or something for many years, finally you can see the object directly. That we call yogi direct perceivers. What is the definition of sense direct perceivers? Non mistaken, knower, thinking. Okay, next time you need to tell me without looking at the books. <laughs> I give you as a homework, huh? <laughs> you are not giving me teaching, huh? I'm giving you teaching. <laughs> okay, make sure the definition is very important. In you know any like a uh, philosophy, in India we have a uh, very popular two Buddhist uh, two philosophy Hindu and Buddhist. When they have a dialogue between Buddhist and non-Buddhist, like uh, between Buddhist and Hindu, every time we, before they have a dialogue, they ask the definition. Definition. For example, right now you know we as a Buddhist we say we don't believe in God, or the Christian believe in God. You know, Muslim believe in Allah, Hindu believe in, you know, Bhagavan, you know. But we say they believe this and that, but really, we really don't know the definition of the God, the God, definition of Allah. When you don't have the definition, how you can have a dialogue between someone? You must know the definition. When you have a clear definition, for you very easy to understand this moment, I, I, you know, my mind is, I have a, this type of minds, you know, 
Yesterday, I have a dead type of mind. If you don't know definition, then you cannot recognize what kind of mind is arise within you. Look at non mistaking, non conceptual, conceptual. No error. This produce upon the aggregation of three conditions. That means whenever we our mind arise, any types of mind arise. Arise depend on you know three conditions, three condition, right? So without sound, you cannot have a air consciousness, right? There's a sound that the air consciousness perceive the sound. If there's no sound, how do you know you have a air consciousness, right? That means in order to arise the air consciousness, you we must need a object. What do you call here? Observe object condition, which is the sound. Second, uncommon, empowering condition. Right? That means even though there's a sound around us, if your eyes, you know, uh, uh, power is so weak, so weak, or you don't have a eye power, eyes power, even though sound is there, you cannot perceive the sound, right? You must, we must have a sound, that we must have a, you know, uh, eyes organ, sorry, air organs, or air power. Plus, what we need, if there's a sound, you have a, you know, air power, air organs, organs. Even though you, if you don't have the consciousness, immediately, you know, preceding con condition, then you cannot have air consciousness, right? Those mean, so when you, when you listen to the sound, there's a sound, there's an air power or air organs, then, so before the air organ, there must be another consciousness, right? Three, most of three things, then you can feel, you know, the, the consciousness is arising. So here important when it's an object, when we get angry towards someone, the person, the objects are the, you know, person or things are the object of the anger. Anger, right? When anger arises, there must be, we need a person or we must need a things which you don't like. This is, you know, object. But how we, if the anger arises within us? For example, someone was really, you know, good friend with you yesterday. Someone, you know, really good friend of you until yesterday. This morning, you know, when you see the person, you totally get angry. The person is same, doesn't change much, but the time everything is changed. The person is same, similar, but why you get angry? You get angry because you act, you act, you know, kind of, you, you minimize, you know, the good qualities, or you add a lot of bit, bad qualities on the object. When you add a lot of, you know, bad quality based on your, your uh, mental creation, based on your thoughts, you add a lot of bad qualities, the final you can see the beauty of the object, beauty of the person. Then you really you know, slowly you dislike the person, you dislike the object, right? Also, you minimize you know the good qualities. Also, you really don't like the person, don't like the object. When you get angry, you know the eighty percent is your mental creation. For example, look at in order to get angry, yeah, there must be object, the person or thing. But second equal, you know uncommon empower, powering condition which is you have. Then third, immediately preceding condition which is you have. Among the condition, most conditions which is belongs to you, not the person, not the things. That means when you are, whenever, whenever, you know, we get angry, upset, you should think it's mainly because of me. You should not totally blame other person, other things are very bad. Now, Five types of sense and direct perceiver, you know, you, we need to, no need to explain. 
Next, mental direct perceiver, a known mistaken, known conceptual knower that arises from its own mental sense power, is uncommon in power condition, type of the mental direct perceivers. When we, when we think about the mental direct perceiver, it's become a little bit different. The five senses depend on the form, the external form or inner form, right? Make sure externally form or internally form. It depends on form. So the form is the object. Then the you know the uh, the eyes organs, air organs is the you know empowering condition. The mental consciousness is not like this. So the previous mind, the previous mind was. So some other types of mind can be the empower condition of the you know mental direct perceivers. So today we just uh, stop here. So next time when you uh, come you know come back for the class, everybody must try to remember the seven false division of mind, the definition of mind, definition of direct uh, valid perceiver, then the definition of sense direct perceivers, then def uh, definition of mental direct perceivers. Okay, so we stop here. So now we start uh, the Lamrim class. Okay, again, everybody, uh, please tell me how many purity are there according to the Vikamala Shila or Vikamala Shila? According to Nalanda traditions, right? So when they give a teaching, they have to go through the three types of purity. What are the three types of purity? Yeah. Okay, make sure, you know, purity of the speech of the master, the purity of the mind of the disciples, purity of the teaching that will be explained. So whenever you listen a teaching from someone, you know, doesn't matter he or she, when, when you re going to attend the teaching, first you check, you know, the purity of the teaching, you know, the purity of teacher, of uh, speech of teacher, or speech of master. Make sure when the master explain, you know, we are Buddhist, we, when master explain Dharma, Make sure the master is explain, you know, according to Buddha teaching. Make sure the master is, you know, giving teaching by his own idea. And make sure what the teacher, you know, practice what he or she said, she explained to us. That means purity of that, you know, speech of the master. Second, purity of the teaching uh, 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 disable is so important. So before you, you attend any teaching, okay, any teaching, make sure you have the right motivation. Make sure you have a ability to understand the teaching. Make sure you have a ability to practice the teaching. If you don't have the you know right motivation, the teaching cannot be benefit for you. That motivation is so important. Even though you have a you know great motivation to attend the teaching, to practice the teaching, if you don't have the ability to to practice the teaching, then the teaching is cannot you know benefit for you. You cannot get any benefits. Even though you have the right motivation, you have the ability to understand. But most important, you must have the ability or you know motivation to practice. Right, so we are sick person. We are sick. We are totally ill. So we need to see a doctor. 
when we see the doctor, you must know I'm going to see the doctor in order to cure my illness or my disease. So, so second, you must know after you see the doctor, you know, you're going to get the right medicine. Make sure after you get the, got the medicine, make sure you, you know, check the medicine on time. Okay, next one, according to, you know, Bikamala Shila or Vikramar Shila, so how, how many greatness are there? Four. What are they? Teaching. Huh? Greatness of the author. Teaching. Uh -huh. Okay, the complete sentence saying, showing the greatness of the teachings, you know, author in order to establish that it is of the noble origin. That means you must check, for example, this day, you know, we have many, you know, books about Buddhism. Make sure the author who wrote the text all the you know the content, the all the idea, all the subject must be explained by Buddha. Make sure this come from you know from all the from Buddha to all the way to the author. Second, showing the greatness of the teaching in order to engender respect for the instruction. That means teaching, you know, you must know the greatness of the teaching. When you know the greatness of the teaching, suddenly you feel, I want to study, I want to attend, I want to practice. Third, how to listen to and explain the teaching. That means there's a true. The master, the guru, how to explain the teaching. The student, you know, the disabled, how to listen how to lead the student with the actual instruction. After you know, you know, three, three of them, then finally the student can, you know, <coughs> uh, actually enter the instruction. Then, author of the teaching, generally this is written by Lama Tsongkhapa, but the root text of this Lamrim, written by whom? Adisha, Adisha, you know, we call, you know, Mm. Tibam Shri Shri Tibam Kara Shri Tibam Kara Gyan Ana Shri Tibam Shri Gyan 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 Ra Gyan Shri Tibam Kara Gyan So So when you look at the the Lamrim, which is written by Adisha, is very, you know, small text. But when he explained the teaching to disable, he explained, you know, exactly like this teaching. So this, you know, Lamrim is man on the commentary on the root uh, Lamrim. Actually, most of the teaching, you know, explained or, you know, instructed by Adisha. The Lamrim Chemo. Make sure this uh, you must know. Then, so when we try to understand the greatness of the author, then make sure you know the person who wrote the book. Make sure he or she must be a very practitioner. Not only you know serious practitioner. Not only make sure he or she receive you know all that lineage all the teaching from his own master. The master makes sure to you know, receive teaching from other master all the way to Buddha. So receiving you know, teaching, receiving initiation is quite, in, quite easy. Practicing teaching, practicing you know, initiation is very difficult. Make sure not only receive the teaching, make sure the author of the book is a very serious practitioner. Not only that, you know, the, the practitioner, you know, receive all the teaching and teachings, all the lineages. Also, he or she practice, and not only practice, he or she, you know, realize the truth. 
So three things are very important. Then we, everybody, I think, study about the biography of Adisha. Then I ask you to do homework as a, you know, how, uh, okay, before we go there, in order to compose that, you know, like a text, what kind of qualification must have? Must, uh, what, what, kind of, what kinds of qualification must author have? What's the uh, how many qualifications? Two, three, five. Huh? Three, right? Okay. What are the three? What the three are? Yeah. Number one, the master must, you know, master in the five topics. Number two, that should possess the instruction that are the key points for the practicing that meeting of the topic of Buddha knowledge, which is have been uh, transmitted in the unbroken lineage through the excellent being from perfect Buddhas. That means the person must receive the instruction, most of the key points, not in all the words, key point. Not only that, the key points, you know, transmitted from Buddha all the way to him or she. Number three, should receive permission to the compost. Hmm? text in the vision of his or her chosen deity. That means, you know, anybody can have, you know, first, you know, qualification. Second, most important one, thought. So before, you know, he or she compose the text, he or she must receive, you know, must have a vision from the chosen deity. So here, who, you know, who was the chosen deity of Atisha? Mother Thara, right? Mother Thara. You know, actually Atisha has a many chosen deity. Particularly, Thara was, you know, one of the, his in very important chosen deity. So, before he went to Indonesia, you know, also Thara asked, Mother Thara asked him to go to Indonesia to meet Lama Selingba or Selendraba. Also before he went to Tibet, you know, Adisha asked to Mother Tara, should I go to Tibet or I should not? Mother Tara said, if you go to Tibet, you can get a lot of benefits. You can, you know, you can split, split the Buddha Dharma all over Tibet but you're going to have a you know, short life. How many short, how many life become short? Huh? Right, that's me, you know, I think 12 something. Anyway, you know, Thara was the you know, chosen deity of um, Adisha. As a Buddhist practitioner, you know, you can pray to any, you know, uh, Buddha, Buddha Sattvas, any types of, you know, the transcendent deities. But you must have your particular, you know, deities. Or, you know, Manjushiri can be your deities, Amida Buddha, you can be your deities, Aryatara, you know, Buddha Shakyamuni. You must have a, you must choose a particular deities as a, your personal kind of, you know, teacher or guru. Generally speaking, if you chose, you know, Mother Thara as your chosen deity, it will be nice. Because in Nalendra University, also, you know, the Vikramana Shila, all the Indian masters, most of them, particularly the 17 master from Nalendra master, all of them, you know, practice, pray to Thara. Thara. So you can see, you know, the mother of Thara, that the left hand is like this, right? It's so like teaching, teaching mudara, protection, protection mudara. This hand is the giving mudara, giving mudara. That means 
I will protect you, you know, I will protect you any kinds of, you know, uh, difficulties. Not only just I protect you, I will give you whatever you want. Then look at the, the right, right, right leg, you know, outstretched touches. Not, you know, fully, you know, uh, 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 posture. This is a half posture. One is just, that means, you know, she's always ready to protect you, giving you, calm down very quickly. So do you know Mithira Buddha, the uh, sitting posture? The Mithira Buddha sit as a chair, chair. That means to down on the sitting on the chair, like, like, right, look at chair. That means he is ready to come to the world in the future. That's why, you know, everybody, if you wish, you, you want, you can choose Tara as your personal deity. Is good. Next, so make sure you know the three, you know, qualification for author of text. Then, so no need to explain how many teacher you know he had or lineage. The lineage is very important by the in Buddhist tradition, particularly in Tibetan, you know, in Tibet. I'm not using, you know, in Tibetan Buddhism. I'm using, you know, in Tibet, yeah, the lineage is very important. Lineage. Generally, we have, uh, you know, two gurus, mainly, you know, root guru and lineage guru. The root guru means whom you receive teaching directly, he or she, you know, she, you are, you know, root guru. For example, you know, your guru's guru, you haven't met the, your guru's guru, you know, he or she, you are lineage guru. For example, right now we are studying Lamrim. Let's say, you know, my teacher is Dalai Lama, his name is Dalai Lama. His holiness teacher was Ling Riboche and Tichan Riboche. And Ling Rinpoche and Tijan Rinpoche received the teaching from, you know, Pabonga Rinpoche. The Pabonga Rinpoche received teaching, you know, his own guru all the way to Adisha. Adisha received teaching from other master, particularly uh, Selim, Lama Selimba. You know, Lama Selimba he received the teaching, his true, very important guru. Those guru received the teaching, you know, one is from uh, Asanga, one is from Nagarjuna. Asanga, Nagarjuna, in Asanga is the teaching from Mithira Buddha. Mithira Buddha, Nagarjuna received the teaching, you know, mainly from Manjushiri. Both of them received, you know, the teaching from Buddha Shakyamuni. That means that we say, you know, unbroken lineage. So when you receive the teaching through unbroken way, so you really going to receive the blessing. L look at, with the regret, regard to lineage of the guru, there are two lineages. Because in Buddhism, we have uh, only two traditions. What are they? Komen, yeah, Hinayana and Mahayana. Hinayana and Mahayana. Okay, look at. In Buddhism, it, we have only two traditions. We don't have many. Right now, we have many traditions. Tibetan Buddhism, Chinese Buddhism, Thai Buddhism, Sri Lankan, Korean, Burma, Cambodia. We really dividing ourselves in many, many parts. Let's say we have only two traditions, like Hinayana or Mahayana. Or there's another way you can say Sanskrit tradition, Pali traditions. We have only two traditions. And Sri Lanka, Thailand, Burma, Cambodia, Laos, they are follow the you know, Pali tradition or Hinayana. And like a Tibet, China, like Tibetan, Chinese, Japanese, Korean, and I think uh, in part of Vietnam, Russian, Mongolian, those are follow the Mahayana tradition. Within the Mahayana, there are again two. What are they? Perfection, huh? Perfection and mantra. Look at that is very clear, right? 
within the Mahayana, there are two lineages. Only two lineages. What are they? Perfections lineage and Mantara lineage. Okay, make sure perfection is talking about, you know, uh, for example, Prajana Brahmita, Hatsudara, we call, you know, perfection, you know, the content is the perfection. So within the Mahayana, there are two, right? Within the perfections, there are, there are two more division. What are they? Deeds. Look at, within the perfection lineage, there's a true lineage, view and deeds. View here referred to, you know, kind of the, the profound view, like emptiness. The deeds refer to the practice of bodhisattvas. You know, accept the emptiness, you know, bodhicitta, great compassion, six paranjana paramita, renunciation, all of them include into the deeds. Because we have uh, two practices, methods and wisdom, right? Methods and wisdom. When we practice methods, what we practice? We practice, you know, compassion, kindness, tolerance, you know, uh, uh, six, uh, five parameters. With the last one not included into the methods, taking refuge, you know, generating bodhicitta, those are included into the deeds lineage. Emptiness is in, included into the <coughs> view or profound lineage. Within the lineage of the deeds, right, their lineage descend from Mitriya, from Majugosha, Majugosha. Perform and, you know, deeds. Perform is the mainly in the performing view, which is emptiness. The deeds has a two lineage. One is, you know, descend from Mitriya. Second is Manjushiri. Right? That means Asanga received the deeds lineage from Mitriya Buddha. The Nagarjuna received the deeds lineage from Manju Gokha or Manju Gosha. Making three lineage in the perfection. That means we have a profound view lineage. You know, lineage from, you know, the deeds lineage from Mitriya Buddha, the deeds lineage from Manju Gokha. That means within the profession lineage we have a three. Then next one, there are five system of the lineage, which is the mantra, right? Respect to the mantra vehicle. Do you remember the meaning why we call, you know, mantra vehicle, perfection vehicle? Do you remember the meaning? I said, for example, just okay, just bodhicitta. Bodhicitta is the mind, right? Bodhicitta is we can name vehicle, vehicle. Bodhicitta we can name Bhumi. Bodhicitta we, meant we can name Path, right? Salam. Because when you use the vehicle, so you're going to reach to your destination very quickly, safely. Right? That means Bodhicitta is look like the vehicle to, to go to Buddhahood, to go to liberation. We call vehicle. Also path. When you go to Marina Bay, you follow the path, you're going to reach Marina Bay. If you don't follow the path, you're going to get East Coast Park, <laughs> not Marina Bay. Right? You have to follow the path, exact path. That means Bodhicitta is path. Okay? For example, path, because if you practice Bodhicitta every day, finally you're going to reach you know, Buddhahood or Nirvana, we call path. The Bodhicitta is Bhumi, right? Generally, there are 10 Bhumis in, in the Arhat path. Generally, all the, you know, practices, renunciation, Bodhicitta, Six Paranjana Paramita, all of them we name Bhumi. Bhumi. Why no? Why? Bhumi. Bhumi is like ground, right? Ground or earth, land. Why Bodhicitta is land? We are not talking Bodhicitta is the land which is very hot. 
we name we name we give we named we call Buddha Jita is Bumi or land. The two meaning one if there's a land, if there's a piece of land, you can grow something. You can grow, so you can you know uh, grow trees, you can grow rice, you can grow flowers, you can grow whatever you want. If you practice Buddhichita, it can generate the good qualities, good qualities. You know, all the Buddhas has a, we believe, we, we believe, we really believe, you know, Buddha has a only good qualities. All the good, good, all the good qualities, you know, generate based on what? Buddhichita, great compassion, emptiness, those are look like land, or, you know, land or, you know, ground. This is why Buddhichita we name Bhumi, land, earth. Not not real land, not, not that one. Huh? Then land, right? Let me look at here. Respect to the mantra vehicle, there are five system of lineages. This means generally, in in the common you know sense, there are four classical tantrayana, mantrayana, yan, yan, right. Generally, what are the what what are the four, you know, mantra classicals? No, this uh, this edition in edition, in edition. Okay, look at if you somebody say, well, we must you must practice mantrayana, mantrayan, tantrayan, vajrayan. You need to think, what kinds of vajrayana I must practice. Also, when you, somebody you know talk about Vajrayana or Tantrayana, you should think there are only only two types of Tantrayana. Yan in vehicle is same. Tantrayan, Tantra vehicle same. We have only two types of Tantrayana, which is which are Hindu Tantrayana, Yan Buddhist Tantrayan, Hindu Vajrayan. Buddhist Vajrayan. Only we have only two Tantrayan, only two Vajrayan, Hindu and Buddhist. Here we must know very one important one. Even though after Buddha, you know, passed away, there were a lot of argument in India. I think after Few years after Buddha passed away, there were a lot of argument, a lot of debate about the Vajrayana and Tantrayana. Many Buddhists, even though in India, many Buddhists, you know, didn't accept, didn't believe the, you know, the Buddhist Tantrayana, Buddhist Vajrayana taught by Buddha Shakyamuni. They thought all the Buddhist Tantrayana, Vajrayana, mainly come from Hindu. Because look at when you go visit the Hindu temple, we have you know in Saragon we have a uh, uh, two Hindu temples. When you visit the temple, you can see very similar you know leading the light, incense, play ball, using the vajra, the you know the fire puja, everything is very similar. Particularly when you look at the, when they when they do when they perform the fire puja, you can see what the stop, the burning place. For burning the fireplace is exactly the colorful, the drawing thing is very similar. And the substance are very similar. I think Hindu has a little more. I think few more, the other way, the exactly the same. Now how we can differentiate Buddhist Vajrayana and Hindu Vajrayana? How? Also when you look at the, you know, the painting of the chakras, Head chakra, throat chakra, heart chakra, navel chakra, secret chakra, the same number. Also the pattern of the chakra is very similar. Also the three channels are very similar. Then how we can differentiate between Hindu or Tantrayana and Buddhist Tantrayana? Okay, that means generally there are two types of Tantrayana, Hindu and Buddhist. Within the Hindu Tantrayana, there are four. 
एक्शन तंत्र याना परफॉर्म तंत्र याना थर्ड वन डू रिमेम्बर योगा तंत्र याना तो फोर्थ वन हायर योगा तंत्र याना सो तो मोस्ट ऑफ द महायान प्रैक्टिशनर हु फॉलो हु प्रैक्टिस द वाजरयाना दे प्रैक्टिस द यू नो हायर योगा तंत्र याना इन जापान कोरिया पर्टिकुलरली इन जापान दे प्रैक्टिस आई थिंक एक्शन तंत्र याना वेरी यू नो वास्ली सो दे आर सा पर्टिकुलरली वन इज आई थिंक वन वाजरयाना टीचिंग नोट यू नो कम फ्रॉम बुद्ध शक्य मुने इस कम फ्रॉम डायरेक्टली वजर दरा वजर दरा वजर दरा एंड आल्सो व्हेन यू यू नो सो सम ऑफ यू इंटरेस्टेड इन टिबेटन बुद्धिज्म यू नो इन टिबेटन बुद्धिज्म वी हैव अ फर्स्ट निंगमा ट्रेडिशन सेकंड इज कग्यू थर्ड इज साग्या For this Gelug, still there is a bit, you know, argument between Sahya and Kagyu. Somebody says Sahya is before than the Kagyu. Somebody says Kagyu is before than the Sahya Ba. So we need to study this one. Then, with the, when you study about the Nyingma lineage, in the Nyingma lineage there are so many Tantra Yana teaching come from Buddha Sahya Moni. Also there are so many Tantra Yana teaching not come from Buddha Sahya Moni, come from directly Vajadara. That means there are, you know, five lineages. Then, in addition, there are such as lineage as the lineage of the tenets, the lineage of the blessing, and the lineage of the various instructions. Tenets is so important. In the future, you know, if you have a time, you must study the tenets. So, I probably, you know. Finish the psychology, Buddhist psychology. I will explain very basic thing about the tenets. Tenets. There's a f- tenets. You know, four four system of uh, philosophical school. Four uh, Buddhist four Buddhist philosophical schools. What are they? Number one, Vavashika. Vavashika. Number two, Swatantatika. Number three. Chitta Mantra. Number four, Madhya Maka. For us, we must know, you know, Chitta Mantra, Tenets, and Madhya Maka. Because why we need to know the Chitta Mantra school and the Madhya Maka? Because you know, most of you has a you know strong Chinese cultures. Most of you, you know, study, attend teaching from many Chinese masters. When the Chinese master explain the teaching, when they talk about mind, minds, they talk about eight minds, eight minds. Particularly, look at in according to you know many Chinese masters say when you have a, some kind of you know bad thoughts, negative thoughts, all the thoughts are look like the web. Right, web in ocean, web, web, yeah, web. When the water become calm, the normal web, right? <laughs> web, web. Okay, <laughs> okay. I explain you now. You can explain me English. <laughs> okay. Look at they always talk of mind and refle- reflection of mind. The final, they explain everything is look like everything look like mind, right? Mind. Is this meaning? They mainly talking about eight minds. Particularly, they talks about you know the all basis mind. Chitta Mantra. The fourth one, we must you know you must study the Madhya Maga School. Madhya Maga School is a true you know division. Consequency school and autonomous school, autonomous and consequence schools, consequence school. All the master from Nalanda, you know, particularly Nagarjuna, Shendi Deva, um, Buddha Palida, all of them follow 
the Madhya Maga, particularly the Consequence Schools. If you don't know much about the Madhya Maga School, then you don't understand emptiness. Because most 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 time we use the emptiness name, and you know Gayuba they use the you know uh, Chakchen, Nima but they use the Zokchen or oh, Chakchen Zokchen emptiness. The name is different, terms are different, but the meaning is very similar. So in order to know all of them, you need to study you know the Madhya Maga School. Also look at. Here, so look, look at this is the in Lambrim. More than seventy-five percent, I think, more than thirty percent. They talks about the emptiness, the two schools in autonomous school and consequence school. Look at So that's why, you know, we need to start the Madhya school. Okay, next, we just start the new um, lesson, the greatness of the teaching. Okay, page number 45. Okay. Concerning the teaching to be explained, the root text of this instruction is the lamb of the part to enlightenment. The text are only, I think, 15 pages for enlightenment. It's co comprehensive and fun fundamental, right? This referred to the lamrim, this lamrim. The root text of this lamrim is Lamb of the Power to Enlightenment, which is written by Adisha. Okay, make sure the Adisha Lamrim is the root text of all Lamrims. Lamrim from Gelugba tradition, Nyingma, Sakya, Kagyuba, all Lamrims. You know, commentary on the, you know, uh, Lamb for the Power to Enlightenment. All Lamrims, you know, rooted by the Lamb of the Power to Enlightenment. There are many texts composed, whose Adisha? Look at here, say, you know, text composed by the elder. Elder, right? In Tibetan we name, you know, Choje. Cho, like a, you know, elder brother. Very respect way. That's why when they translate this elder, Choje. Many texts. But this text were very comprehensive and fundamental. Because since it is teach by drawing together key point of the both sutra and mantra, this teaching is very important because it consists, you know, the the two matters, which is sutra and mantra vehicles. Its subject matter is comprehensive. That means it is include you know all the Buddha teaching, the key point. Since it is comprehensive, the stage of the disciplining the mind. The text is so important, you know, very comprehensive, you know, emphasize how to discipline your mind, how to train your mind, tame your mind, right? That means this teaching is so important, but it consists, content, you know, all the, you know, important uh, key points, particularly sutra and mantra. It's very much emphasized about how to train, you know, how to train your mind. It is easy to put into practice. And since it is, you know, unknown with the instruction of two gurus who are skilled in the system of the two great... Do you remember the two trailblazers? <coughs> two trailblazer, do you remember what are they? Who are they? Nagajuna and Asanga. Nagajuna is the tail blazer of Madhya Maga. Asanga is the tail you know, blazer of the Chitta Mantra school. Chitta Mantra school. That means you know, whatever he explained, everything come from the you know the two great you know tail blazers. 
So here, very important, it emphasizes the stage of, you know, disciplining the mind. All the Buddha teaching only about how to discipline your mind, how to tame your mind, how to subdue the positive, negative mind, how to generate the positive mind. Look, look, okay. When you, when you think about how, how I must practice Dharma, just simple thing, you know, I must discipline my mind. I must generate the positive mind. I must decre decrease the negative minds. Very simple. Right? When you start uh, study Lamrim from beginning to end, it never mentioned, you know, you do, you know, protector puja, you must do this dissertation, that dissertation. Always explain, practice great compassion, bodhicitta, emptiness, six prajana paramita, special insight, kama bading. So somehow, you know, in Buddhist uh, society, we have a lot of misunderstanding about how to practice Dharma. When somebody asks you to do practice of Dharma, suddenly you try to find the mala, right? <laughs> oh, where's my mala? <laughs> try to find mala? Oh, you try to lead a light. <laughs> or try to burn a stick, right? You never think, oh, you must do practice of Dharma. You never think, oh, how much generate, uh, generate great compassion, Buddhichita, right? You always find, why was my mala? Oh, I don't need to do practice of Dharma. No. That's why, uh, Adisha was in Tibet. He was in Tibet. So someone is uh, doing a lot of, you know, recitation and chanting, recitation and chanting. Then Adisha said, oh, better to practice Dharma. Then he thought, it is not the right practice, you know, recitation, chanting, it is not the right practice, I must do something else. Then he just fully, you know, meditated on something, only meditation. Next time Adisha came, I said, oh, better to do, better to do the, the uh, better to do the practice of Dharma. Then he thought, before I was reciting, a lot of chanting, he said, do Dharma. Second, I, I was doing a lot of, you know, concentration, mindfulness, he said, do Dharma. So how should I practice Dharma? Then he said, completely, completely renounce in the samsara, generate bodhicitta based on great compassion you will become a Buddha, right? That means recitation, not about renunciation. Only concentration is not about the renunciation and bodhicitta. Then it's a completely renounce with the samsara, generate bodhicitta based on great compassion. Do you remember, I think some of you already attend the Lamrim, the Mahayana teaching uh, rooted by great compassion great compassion. If you feel, if you believe, you know, I am Buddhist, number one, if you really believe I am Buddhist, always, you know, follow a thing about law of causality. If you really think I am Buddhist, always think about law of causality, positive karma, produce positive, you know, result. Negative karma produce negative karma. I should not accumulate negative karma. I always, you know, accumulate positive karma if you feel Buddhist. Second, if you think I'm Mahayan Buddhist, I'm Mahayan, you know, practitioner, then you should not harm anybody, include, you know, insect. But Singapore, you don't have a lot of insects, which is we have. <laughs> Even though you should not harm anybody. Why? Why? Yeah, you can say, you know, all same time, you should be a mother. But most important, you should say, the insect and me, we are equally one happiness. Don't want any suffering. Then why I'm killing, harming? I don't want suffering. You know, he, the, this insect doesn't want suffering. I don't want, you know, suffering. My enemy doesn't want suffering. 
If you think this way, then you become good Buddhist, you become, you know, good Mahayana practitioner. You totally neglect, you know, practicing great compassion, bodhicitta, still you, you know, you know, say I follow Mahayana uh, teaching. That means usually I said you follow the Mahayana tradition, not the Mahayana teaching. Oh, you really, you know, don't care about positive karma, negative karma. You still feel, still believe I am Buddhist. Then I say, you are follow the Buddhist tradition, not the Buddhism tradition, right? That's why when you woke up, you need to lead a light, burn incense, right? This tradition, just put the water. You, you forget to feel the water, you feel, you feel guilty. You forget to lead the light, you feel guilty. If you forget to practice great compassion, you never feel guilty. <laughs> right? This is really, you know, we, we, are tr- we have a lot of, you know, misunderstanding. That is so important to, you know, practice the uh, great compassion. That's why look at it. Since it emphasizes the stage of disciplining the mind, it is easy to put into practice. Since it is in order with the instruction of two gurus. That means we are very lucky to have, you know, this Lamrim, Lamrim written by Adisha. Otherwise, we really don't know how to practice the Dharma. You know, this text explains different things. Other texts explain different things. You know, so many, you know, things separately. Look like, you know, if you don't have a supermarket, <laughs> For you, it be difficult to go shopping, right? <laughs> you know, some shop in the Marina Bay sell, you know, flour. There's another shop sell oil in, uh, what is it, uh, Aljunat. There another shop sell like uh, uh, fruits in the East Coast Park. Then you have to go there, then you, you cannot go. It's, it takes very little time. Now we have very easy when you go supermarket. Everything there, right? Very easy. Same, this Lamrim look like supermarket. <laughs> Everything put together, put together. But the Lamrim is not expensive as supermarket. <laughs> okay, it's very important. Look at put into practice. Very easy. So this is one of the you know the unique quality of the this Lamrim teaching. This means. Number two, now we move to page number 46. We, we will finish uh, the four grades. Teaching in order, in order to engender respect of the instruction. So look at The greatness of the teaching is indicated by four qualities. It, it, it is elicit, right? Elicits in the students. So these are so important teaching indicated by the four qualities. What are the four qualities? Number one, knowing that all of the teaching are free. <laughs> I think Singapore has a very unique mentality. Always want to go the short. <laughs> Always a free of the contradiction. <laughs> Number two, Practice. Number three, intent. Number four, okay. Those four, you know, quality, uh, uh, qualities are very important for us. Number one, knowing that all of the teachings, all of the teaching taught by Buddha Shakyamuni. All of the teaching commented on the Buddha Shakyamuni doesn't matter who composed, composed by the Indian master, Chinese master, Tibetan master, Thai Sri Lankan master, it doesn't matter. All the Buddhist teachings are free of contradiction. There's no contradiction between, you know, Sutrayana teaching and, you know, Mantrayana teaching. There's no contradiction, you know, Hinayana teaching and Mahayana teaching. There is no teaching between you know Tibetan Buddhism and Chinese Buddhism. No, this was so knowing the all Buddha teaching are free of contradiction. Number two, coming to the to understand that all of the scriptures are instruction of instruction for practice. 
right? Whichever you know book about Buddhism always instruct us, always give instruction for our practice. Practice. Look like medicine, right? The medicine mainly for what? All the medicine. There are so many types of medicine, mainly about what? Cure, cure the illness, right? There are so many teaching taught by Buddha Shakyamuni. You know, eighty-four thousand. You get it, you know, right? 84,000 taught by Buddha Shakyamuni. So how many teaching on commentary on? Many, many, many. In, in Tibetan language, only Tibetan language, we have almost... What? Almost over 10,000 books. 10,000 books. I have a hard... Uh, I have one hard, hard drive, right? Hard drive. It's 150 GB, right? It's full of the text, but it's, it's not all of them. 150 GB. <laughs> yeah, I had how to read one. <laughs> yeah. There's been, look at, all of them mainly for practice. Mainly for how to turn our mind, how to generate positive mind, how to degenerate the negative minds. Number three, easily. Funding the concourse intent. Do you know what does mean? Easily funding the concourse intent. Why? Why Buddha Shakyamuni? You know, in the in the let's say common sense or uncommon sense. Why Buddha Shakyamuni? You know, come came on the planet. Why? Yeah. Teach us. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. You know, Buddha came mainly for, you know, free us from suffering. This is his main, you know, reason to take a rebirth on the planet in India or Nepal. How he can, you know, free us from suffering? How? Uh, give a lesson, right? Give a lesson. What kind of lesson are most important? Uh, yeah, same right. Giving teaching, tranquil of Dharma. So all of them mainly he focused, you know, free from free us from suffering. So he gives gives so many teachings. Mainly emphasize what? How to introduce emptiness? How to introduce us emptiness? Emptiness. Why? All the sufferings, you know, arise based on three poisons mind, right? Three poison minds. The three poison minds. What are three poison mind? Attachment, anger, attachment, hatred, ignorance. Within the three, who are the root? Which one the root? Ignorance. Ignorance is the root of the suffering, root of the samsara, root of the problems. The ignorance only eliminate when you understand emptiness. Emptiness. This means Buddha gave so many teachings, everything you know, how to emphasize how to you know introduce emptiness. Intent. Number four, automatically, look at, refraining from the dead wrongdoing. So when you study Namrim, you're going to know there's no any contradiction among the, you know, true Buddhist tradition, among the Sutrayana and Vajrayana. After you study Namrim, you're going to understand all the teachings, all the scriptures are mainly for practice. Also, you're going to understand, yeah, Buddha mainly emphasized to introduce us emptiness. After you study Lamrin, automatically refraining from the great wrongdoing. It looks like, you know, giving a, a giving a awareness, right? For example, nowadays, quite, I think one way is good, one is no good. For example, right, we have a lot of disease. Among the disease, for example, AIDS, right? A D AIDS or HIV. 
If you tell someone you should not have uh, any physical relation to anybody, they won't listen to you, right? If the person knows there's a serious disease, automatically the people won't have a physical relationship with anybody, right? Automatically, man, when you understand Ramarim, suddenly you feel, feel, you know, fear about accumulating negative karma. You're very happy about negative, positive karma. Also, when you understand Ramarim, after you understand Ramarim, you feel, and you're going to understand attachment, anger, ignorance, those are very bad. That means automatically, you know, refraining from the great wrongdoing. Okay, next. Contradiction. Now we just move to the Mm. Now we just think about, you know, the contradiction. Generally, in the ancient time, there's a you know concept many people think you must practice only sudrayana should not practice vajrayana then they feel there's a contradiction between vajrayana and sudrayana not only that many people think you must only practice the hinayana path hinayana practice should not mahayana okay because the person who practice mahayana path they say you should not practice hinayana path they, they say there's a contradiction. If you practice Vajrayana, you should not practice, you know, Bodhisattva path and Hinayana. You know, there's a, they feel contradiction. This means Vajrayana, then, you know, uh, the um, Prajana Paramitayan, then Hinayan. There's a three, you know, like a stars, right? Three stars. It look like the Mahaya and so the, the Hinayana practices are look like foundation. It's really in you know, a foundation, perfect foundation. Without having, without practicing the Hinayana paths, Hinayana practices, you cannot practice the Mahayan path, Mahayan path. Without practicing Hinayana and Mahayana, you cannot practice Vajrayana. In order to practice the, you know, Vajrayana, Vajrayana, you must practice the Sutra Mahayana, Hinayana. There's no contradiction. He's, look, he said, uh, page number 47. Thus, it is contradictory to perform that you should not turn in the, you know, scriptural collection of the Hinayana because you are in the Mahayana practitioner, right? That's why many people think, I'm Mahayana practitioner, I follow Mahayana tradition, I should not practice, you know, you know, Theravada practices, I should not practice the Hinayana paths. I ask you one question, you know, all of you, what is the unique practice of the Hinayana? What is the unique practices in Mahayana? Huh? <coughs> Okay. Okay, General, how do you feel? Are you practicing Hinayana and Mahayana both? Yes. Overlap. Overlap, right? Yeah. Both of them. Are you practice both of them? Yes. Hinayana and Mahayana. Okay. So here, you must know few importance. I thought I should finish the four greatness, but I don't think I can finish. Okay, you, we can say uh, uncommon Hinayana practice. Hinayana practice with the common, because shared, right? Shared and shared. Shared by. So, for example, the Buddhist one, when he or she practice the Mahayana path, he or she also practice the Hinayana path, which is shared with the Mahayana. For example, okay, so we have a 
donkey. Then we have a horse. Then we have a yak. I think we would know a yak, right? In Tibet we have a big animal. Donkey, horse, and yak. You can be donkey, <laughs> you can be horse, you can be yak. If you really want to be yak, you have to carry the, the luggage of the horse or the donkey. You have to carry the three luggages. If you're able to carry only the horse luggage, you should not consider I'm yak. I'm yak. You should consider I'm horse. Horse. <laughs> if you're able to carry only the donkey luggage, you cannot horse. You should think I am a donkey, not a horse. That means, look at. So the yak must carry the you know the, the equivalent luggage of the horse, equivalent luggage of the donkey. That means Mahayana practitioner, particularly Vajrayana practitioner, must practice the Vajrayana path. You know, uh, Sudra Mahayana and Vajrayana as well as Hinayana. And the the donkey carries only you know, the small luggage. No, the donkey not need to carry the horse, e e equivalent as a horse luggage, right? No. That means there's a one practitioner who only want, only want to practice the Hinayana path, not the Mahayana exception, right? Then the person who want to practice Mahayana, then they must practice the Hinayana paths. So what is the uniqueness of, you know, uniqueness of the Mahayana, Hinayana practice? What's the uniqueness? Discipline. Huh? Discipline. Huh? Strict discipline. No, he says strict disciplines. Huh? Okay. Okay, look at, we have uh, three practices. Practices of Morality, practices of practices of tripitika. Do you remember practices of morality, practices of mindfulness, practices of wisdom, right? Like wisdom. Look at that means morality, mindfulness, wisdom. All of them, you know, Hinayana practitioner, you know, Sutra Mahayana, Vajrayana practitioner, all of them practice, you know, three practices. All of them practice the morality. They must follow strictly morality. You should know that I am Mahayana practitioner, I no, no need to follow, you know, uh, the morality strictly. No, you must, you must practice the, you know, Shila or morality very strictly, no exception. As a Mahayana practitioner, you must practice empty, uh, uh, impermanence, as well as Hinayana practitioner or must practice impermanence, four noble truths, twelve links interdependent, right? Okay, so he, she said, or somebody said, you know, what did you say? What is the uniqueness of the Hinayana practitioner? They save themselves before others, they want the Yeah, that means... They want to they want to free from samsara only benefit from yeah. themselves. This is the only uniqueness. Okay, that means if you look at now, we feel uh, you know we say I'm Mahayan practitioner. Most time we emphasize mainly for whom? Myself. We say something we must ah. Uh? No no uniqueness, Hinayana. Look at, we consider ourselves, I am Mahayan practitioner, right? So when you enter the temple, how, you, how do you pray? You pray for all sentient beings or pray for yourself? All beings. <laughs> yeah, mostly, uh, yes, we saying all sentient beings, right? That's why if you really consider yourself, I'm Mahayan practitioner, I'm, I'm follow, you know, I follow the Mahayan practi uh, practi tradition, whatever you do good things, do for benefit all sentient beings. Even though recite one mantra, recite one mantra for benefit for all sentient beings. That means your main, you know, activities for, for whom? For others all sentient beings, right? 
if you think really think I'm doing this for all sentient beings, then you no, no need to worry yourself because you are included into all, all sentient beings. If you feel, you know, wish all Singaporeans are happy, then you will be happy. All Singaporeans, you know, going to receive uh, $10,000 from Singapore government. <laughs> right? Then you no, you, no, you no need to give separate application. Do you? No. Everybody is going to receive, you are going to receive. Then all sentient beings be happy, you are happy. So that's why you don't need to worry, you know, separately yourself. Just always think about, you know, all sentient beings. Okay, as a homework, next time everybody precisely try to understand the, the four qualities. Right? Four qualities. What are the four qualities? Okay, number two. Hmm? Number four, three, three. Number four. Okay, as a homework, please everybody, you know, uh, read very precisely and try to get the, you know, the essence. How, you know, all teaching, there's no contradictions. How all teaching, you know, mainly about instruction or practice. So it's, it's homework, huh? Next time when you, I ask you a question, no need to read the books. <laughs> okay. Okay, so next uh, we do the dedication prayers.